Fatty acid synthesis during the well-fed state occurs in primarily in the liver and in adipose tissue. Now, part of the fatty acid synthesis pathway happens in the muscles, but it doesn't go all the way, and we'll go into that here in a minute. So in the well-fed state, glucose goes through glycolysis, producing pyruvate. And the pyruvate can either go to oxaloacetate or acetyl-CoA. Since we're in the well-fed state, pyruvate dehydrogenase is going to be activated uh, by the uh, insulin signaling. And so we'll get the production of acetyl-CoA. Uh, Acetyl-CoA, however, will combine with oxaloacetate to form citrate. And that citrate will move out of the mitochondria through the citrate shuttle. The reason this has to happen is because there is no transporter that will move acetyl-CoA directly out of the mitochondria by itself, so it has to be incorporated into citrate. When it's uh, incorporated into citrate, uh, it will be reconverted into acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. Now, remember, the oxaloacetate is not going to be uh, transported right back into the mitochondria as you might think. Uh, so what happens is the acetyl-CoA is trans, uh, transformed into malonyl-CoA. But in order to move on from here, we need NADPH. So the oxaloacetate is acted on by malic enzyme. The malic enzyme produces NADPH and malate, and the malate is transported back into the mitochondria. At that point, the malonyl-CoA goes into fatty acid synthesis, uh, producing palmitate, and the palmitate is uh, attached to a CoA to form a fatty, ac fatty acyl-CoA. That's incorporated into a triglyceride with uh, glycerol-3-phosphate. Uh, glycerol-3-phosphate, of course, comes from the glycolysis where dihydroxyacetone phosphate is first made and then converted into glycerol-3-phosphate. Then this triglyceride is combined with other lipids and, and apoproteins and transported into the blood as LDL. Now the fatty acid can either be uh, transferred into an adipose tissue for storage or into muscle for energy use, in which case either way the glycerol will be transported back to the liver and reused rather than using uh, glycolytic uh, intermediates. Now we're going to take a special look at this part of the pathway, the fatty acid synthesis. Now fatty acid synthesis takes, uh, is, uh, acted on, is done by fatty acid synthase. Now fatty acid synthase is a very long multifunctional protein and it usually functions as a dimer, so two identical subunits of uh, this protein uh, work together. So up here we can see, for example, this three-letter uh, code. So acyl. So one of the activities of the fatty acid synthase is as an acyl carrier protein. So that part of the protein is actually right here. So this part of the protein is an acyl carrier protein. You can get the acyl group attached right here. Another function of the enzyme is the malonyl acetyl CoA ACP translocase. So this is, is talking about this is referring to the acyl carrier protein. So there's a malonyl acetyl CoA acyl carrier protein translocase, uh, abbreviated MAT. That part of the functionality is right here. And what it actually does is it transfers the malonyl acyl group from coenzyme A to the protein itself. And then the steps in fatty acid synthesis are condensation reduction, dehydration reduction, and those four steps repeat each other over and over until you get a 16 carbon palmita uh, palmita palmitate or palmitic acid. And then when all that's done, a thioesterase, TE, will release palmitate from the carrier protein. So looking at the stereochemistry of fatty acid synthesis, it takes seven acetyl-CoA's to produce seven malonyl-CoA's. This uh, uses up seven ATPs, and it's combined with seven CO2s. So uh, this uh, ma seven malonyl CoA's are then combined with one more acetyl CoA, and using up fourteen NADPHs to form palmitate. So the overall stereochemistry is eight acetyl CoA's, fourteen NADPHs, and seven ATPs to form our palmitate or our palmitic acid. 
Now, since eight of these uh, acetyl-CoA's, these are all transferred from the mitochondria. So if you remember, we have the acetyl-CoA combines with oxaloacetate, and they form citrate. And so we're going to say eight of these and eight of these, and they form citrate. Citrate's transported out of the mitochondrial matrix, and then it's converted back into the oxaloacetate. So we're going to get eight oxaloacetates and eight acetyl-CoA's. And then these eight oxaloacetates are then acted on by malic enzyme to produce malate and NADPH. So you get eight NADPHs and eight malates. So of the 14 NADPHs that are needed for this, eight of them are coming from uh, the oxaloacetate. The other six are going to come from the pentose phosphate shunt. So in the well-fed state, you are assumingly you have a high energy charge, a high amount of acetyl-CoA. So high acetyl-CoA will actually activate pyruvate carboxylase. And so this uh, is actually supposed to have an up arrow in it. And for some reason when I convert this picture into my iPad version, it erases and changes some things. So that up upregulates the uh, pyruvate carboxylase. And then what happens is the uh, some the pyruvate combines with uh, bicarb and ATP, and pyruvate carboxylase forms it into acet oxaloacetate. Then that excess acetyl CoA right here will combine with the oxaloacetate to form citrate. And I don't know why, but whenever I converted this slide into the iPad version, it flipped this arrow over. This arrow is actually supposed to be pointing like that. Now what's neat is, uh, as the high amounts of acetyl-CoA are used up, and this is transported out of the mitochondria, eventually you, st you stop getting this positive feedback, and then pyruvate dehydrogenase is uh, kind of reactivated to create more acetyl-CoA. So you're never using up all of these intermediates of the uh, TCA cycle. So the citrate shuttle uh, basically is working like this. So we have the pyruvate going in, it uh, pyruvate carboxylase forms oxaloacetate, and then citrate synthase forms the citrate. And at that point, it, high concentrations of citrate will start pouring out of the citrate shuttle and then citrate lyase out here will reform oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA. Then malate dehydrogenase or malic enzyme will uh, form malate and NADPH from NADH. And I think actually I may have said this wrong earlier uh, so the oxaloacetate is acted on by malate dehydrogenase to form malate. Then malic enzyme will uh, act on malate to form NADPH and pyruvate. So down here it says, why not use the malate aspartate shuttle here? And it's pointing up to the oxaloacetate. And again, um, my iPad has changed a little bit of the arrowing. Uh, so this is supposed to be pointing, this right box is supposed to be sitting right here, uh, or a little bit closer, and the arrow is not pointing to the malate molecule, it's, it's supposed to be pointing past it. So why not use the malate aspartate shuttle on oxaloacetate? Well, because if you did, you wouldn't form NADPH. So you want to convert it to malate, and from malate to pyruvate and NADPH. So the last thing I'm going to look at in this uh, video is uh, the production, the actual production of palmitate. So you have your acetyl, or so this is the acetyl group. It got transferred from acetyl-CoA to acetyl carrier protein. And then you have this malonyl uh, that's attached to a carrier protein. And these two molecules will condense together giving up a CO2. So here we have two carbons, here we have three, and one of those carbons will be lost as CO2, so this right here will be lost as CO2 in condensation, and you get a four-carbon acetoacetyl acyl carrier protein. 
Then with the addition of NADPH, you get a reduction of this double bond, so you get an alcohol here. And then dehydration, I'm going to be pulling off the OH here and one of the H's here, and I'll get a double bond between these two carbons. <laughs> and then finally, the last reduction with NADPH, it's going to add a hydrogen here and here, uh, reducing the double bond. So basically, I've taken a two-carbon ACP, and I've formed it into a four-carbon ACP by condensing it with malonyl ACP. This uh, process, th so this molecule will go up here and replace the acetyl group, and the process will repeat itself. So another malonyl will condense with this butyryl ACP, and it'll go through the cycle uh, several times to produce the 16-carbon palmitil or um, palmitic acid. So it'll produce the palmitil ACP, and then the thioesterase of the protein will cleave off the palmitate.